Now, can you see me, Elena? Yes. Great. How are you? <laughs> well, thank you. And you? I'm you doing see well. me? I you see, see you. me? I see okay. you perfectly, and I see the, the, be the beautiful painting of a blue car you have behind. <laughs> Thank you. Thank it's you a so much. It's, it's a little late for you. Thank you for taking the no, call. It's okay. it's Thank okay. you for it's giving okay. me the opportunity. So um, this wine is a rock star of a wine for more than a decade now. It's gotten the best reviews, the highest ratings all over the world, and is brought to Puerto Rico by our dear friends from La Enoteca de Ballester. Uh, it, well, somebody's telling you, is telling us that this wine gets to Spain via wine hunters. We got some people joining the conversation. So, Elena, uh, before we taste the wine, I have the Titolo. Do you pronounce it Titolo or Titolo? Titolo. Titolo. So, we have the uh, Titolo 2016. Uh, oh, 16. Yeah, that's okay. what I have. Can, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the winery, your property? Yes, uh, my adventure started in 2000 uh, when I decided to study viticulture and enology because my father, my grandfather, and my great grandfather have the vines, but they don't make a wine. They sold the grapes, all other producer or consortium. And uh, in 2000, they decided to sold the property. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, oh, why? Why this? Mm -hmm. um, and I decided to change in my life. Uh, and uh, I decided to study viticulture and enology. I studied in Pisa. Mm -hmm. And um, I decided to start to make a wine. I have six hectares all together around the cellar. is a single vineyard. And uh, I, I decided to make only one wine, only one label. This is mm -hmm. a very, very strange because usually, <laughs> not is usually in the in the cellar this, and um, um, I I I decide with a single vinya with a single grape I make only one wine, but better I think. Yeah, well, you concentrate all of your efforts in one single bottle, and yeah. it shows that your efforts have more than succeeded. You have gotten great, great reviews. Uh, my dear friend uh, Pedro from La Enoteca de Ballester, yeah. the wine director, told me Elena is a rock star. She is a brilliant winemaker. She's a genius. She's already uh, garnering a lot of press. Uh, I, ha I, I had seen this wine in La Enoteca. I have not tried it. This is going to be my first time with you. But then I start reading about you in the internet, and it definitely, um, I'm really excited about that. It. It, it definitely sort of opened my eyes. Uh, my first question is the Aglianico yes. grape. Um, here yeah. in the New World, we're used to seeing a lot of Cabernet, a lot of Merlot, a lot of Pinot Noir, a lot of Tempranillo from Spain, especially here in Puerto Rico. How, could, how would you describe the, the Aglianico grape? Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, the Aglianico uh, is a very important grape in Italy and uh, most famous in South Italy. The um, Aglianico grape is a later grape because usually uh, we uh, have the harvest in the end of October, the 1st November, and is a very elegant grape. But the three are the characteristic, uh, principal characteristic of Aglianico, acidity, minerality, and tannin. Um, when the um, vintage is a little bit cold, the Aglianico is a very vertical wine. Your vintage is a uh, a uh, cold vintage. Usually, I love the cold vintage because it's possible to work with uh, uh, elegance, mm -hmm. and uh, with um, uh, is um, and uh, it's possible to um, uh, to pro to produce and wine very minerality. And uh, um, uh, when the uh, vintage are a little bit uh, uh, hot, mm -hmm. uh, you have acidity, minerality, and tannin, but uh, um, fruity and spicy supported the uh, and it's a very balanced wine all right let's let's give it a try i have it right here this is a yeah. wine that you get a la enoteca de ballester yeah. this is going to be yeah. my first time trying it so we got the titolo whoa yeah. lovely color lovely yeah. lovely color i love the color here this is a 2016 um yeah. i i decanted and triple decanted this because i heard that is a wine that needs some uh, air and 
Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, the nose is so elegant. Is I love the perfume here. You Thank get you. these delicious notes of herbs, all kinds of herbs, lavender. You get a little bit of spice. Not a mm -hmm. little bit, a lot of spice. And then you get this forest floor. You have this sort of tomato, rosemary, lots of herbs here. Uh, very, very sort of uh, elegant and, and, and feels... Uh, very ethereal, uh, very, very complex nose, lots of minerality. Um, yeah. what's the, what are the characteristics of the Ayanico grape in the nose? Oh, uh, in the nose, uh, yes, it's a very elegant wine. Uh, and where the vintage is a little bit cold, uh, in this case, uh, is uh, uh, a very floral wine. But when, My God. Uh, yes. It's very floral. Uh, it's very, uh, it's a violet, uh, um, uh, um, rose. Uh, is a it's very rose, floral. rose petal. Yeah. I yes. can I can see why they call it the Barolo of the South. Yeah, because it's yeah. very angular. Uh, it's it's very sort of ethereal. You got some um, some tar, some ash. Is this yeah. from the volcanic yeah. soil? Yeah. Yes, uh, we are in Basilicata, and the Basilicata is a, a small region between Calabria and Puglia. My town is Barile, and is in the part north of Basilicata, on the Monte Vulture. Monte Vulture is an old volcano extinct, it's like 1,300 meters, and we are in 600 meter high on top of the mountain. And uh, the soil is a dark soil, minerality soil, where you see the profile, the our soil, you see the many stratification, the many eruption of vulture, ash and lava, and um, uh, the black, light gray and gray are very different uh, stratification. And uh, um, you have sometimes uh, one uh, uh, brown stratification stratification. The brown stratification is the clay and represent when the volcano is sleeping. And uh, this is a this fantastic is, wine, Elena. This is my God, the nose <laughs> is I cannot stop smelling it. I'm getting notes of cherry, uh, macerated black cherries and red cherries. Um, getting a little bit of uh, graphite, iron, sang, sang wine, blood notes, blood orange. Uh, some citric, mm -hmm. if that's possible, some red citric, red citrus fruit. It's very complex nose. Wow! I'm sorry. I'm Thank I'm you. just uh, I'm just so excited about this wine. It's unbelievable. For those who are watching in Puerto Rico and other parts of the world, and who will be watching in YouTube, this is Titolo Ayanico mm -hmm. del Vulture or Vulturi. How do you pronounce it? Vulturi. Vulture. This is unbelievable. This is a 2016. But make no mistake, whatever vintage you buy of this wine, you're getting a wine that has more than 93, 94 points constantly. Pedro Alvarado from La Noteca told me that this is the crown jewel of the south of Italy. So this is delicious. Please, please continue explaining me the uh, Basilicata region. Yes, and uh, the the soil uh, um, have this particular is is a hygroscopic soil, because the water the raining water draining in the lava ash, and uh, the clay stop the water and the plants not have a never stress hydrics, because for the uh, our DOC and DOCG not is a permise the irrigation. And um, um, the, the, uh, my, uh, my vines are highest and oldest in the Vulture, are 600 meter high on top of the volcano mm -hmm. and are 60, 70 years old. I love, I love the acidity in the mouth, uh, the elegance, yes. the yes. length, the finish yes. is very, very long. It stays with you yes. on the back of the mouth like... Yes very close to the throat for a minute minute and a half it's a very yeah. long finish yes it's um is a totally different uh, um the normal uh, uh wine uh, the normal wine sud italy because usually where people think of sud italy think very hot weather a very strong red wine but for the vulture it is not true 
because we are uh, uh, on the mountain, we are in the middle, the sea is very far, and the weather is very cold. We have every winter of snow, and the summer and spring are very fresh with the high description night and day, 10, 11 grade. This is most important for the Alianico because uh, the Alianico is a later grape. Mm -hmm. uh, the harvest... La later ripening. It ripens yeah. later than others. Yeah. Yes. And uh, uh, the high description night and day help uh, the phenolic maturation and is uh, in most important for the Alianico del Burture grapes. In many ways, Elena, you are an ambassador of your region or Basilicata or, or of Italy. Uh, are you been obviously in all sorts of magazines, Decanter, Wine Spectator, Robert Parker, yeah. and you've been obviously a uh, promoter or you've been referenced as a brilliant Italian wine, wine maker, uh, someone who's giving a lot of, uh, uh, getting a lot of great reviews. What, what do you try to communicate to your consumers about your region? What's, what's your philosophy in making these wines? What do you expect? consumers to appreciate about your region, about your wines? Yes, um, I, I think it's most important uh, for the winemaker, uh, the respect for the terroir and the respect for the variety. I usually describe my wine in the modern, but not modernist wine. I love modern, that modern because uh, it's my vision and is my Alianico. Mm -hmm. uh, but not modernist because uh, for me it's most important the tradition and the terroir and the uh, respect for the variety. And, and I love I the color because it, does, it doesn't have a lot of extraction. It just has the right color. It's not yeah. super dark red. It's like a cherry, beautiful color. Uh, it, it's as you said, it's a, it's a wine that combines power, elegance, finesse, balance, freshness. To me, it's one of those unicorn wines where you have a little bit of everything. You have uh, a lot of uh, sense of place. I mean, this, this is not a wine that one is going to uh, it, it, it may, maybe mistake for a California wine or Argentina wine. This is uniquely Italian. I mean, it's, it, it can only be an Italian wine that knows. Yes, yes, yes. It's, um, in, it's terms, a... in, terms of, in terms of pairings, Elena, uh, what do you recommend? Let's assume that some of our viewers will go and buy these wines. What do you pair it with in terms of food? Yes. Um, usually in Basilicata, we drink Alianico with uh, um, lamb, um, meat lamb. of lamb. Yes, because the, the acidity clean the palate and help drinkability. And uh, with a uh, cured meats and with a uh, uh, aged um, cheese. Uh, yeah, the the no the nose Sorry. the nose of this wine has some funkiness, some uh, some cheesy notes, some musky notes. Uh, it's 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 a wine that it's it's very easy to enjoy, but it's a little hard to describe. It doesn't feel like a commercial wine at all. It's a different wine. Uh, maybe it yeah. is because I haven't had that many Ayanico, but it's, it's just such, such a unique, unique, unique wine. Um, the, the other question that I have for you is, uh, how many countries carry uh, your wine now? Titolo is in how many countries approximately? In, uh, uh, we export in uh, uh, 56 countries. Okay. Uh, very, um, we, we prefer to divide the, the market and uh, um, we, we love to work uh, with a small uh, importer in the every country because uh, um, we think uh, uh, our wine uh, is uh, important, uh, uh, the storytelling and uh, it's, it is important the story, the terroir, uh, and uh, the Basilicata not is the most famous region. And it's most important to, uh, to, explain, uh, uh, to explain this for, uh, the, for the people. And I work with my husband. And you work with your husband. Do, do you have yeah. a mentor or do you have an inspiration, maybe a winemaker or a winery that you look up to, not that you try to copy because you have your own unique style, but is there someone mm -hmm. who's influenced your approach to winemaking? 
Yeah. Um, um, I start uh, very young. Um, I start uh, after grammar school and uh, I decide to change my life uh, and I return to work with uh, my grandfather. Uh, my mommy and my daddy are a teacher. Okay. <laughs> Beautiful. I, I return to work with my grandfather and my my inspiration is uh, my grandfather. Beautiful. Uh, yes, my, my grandfather today is uh, 94 year old. God bless him. Every every morning in Vienna, every morning at five o'clock, every day. That's that's great. And does he still drink wine? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, yes. that's why he's so healthy, and that's why he's had <laughs> such a long life. Okay, I I don't want to take you. Yeah, and, uh, to, come, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, and uh, um, usually uh, I love the, uh, the 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 Nebbiolo grape. I love the Nebbiolo, and I love the Bar Barolo Barbaresco in Italy. And, yeah, I uh, was going to ask you about that because it's a little late for you. It's about to be midnight, so I don't want to take too much of your time. What are the wines that you enjoy from Italy and from, a, from abroad? What are your favorite wines that you drink? Uh, oh, that's a good question. Before you answer that, do you use French oak, American oak, any other kind oh, of oak? Yes. I use French oak. I um, I start uh, in uh, in the past uh, in uh, 2000 2002. I start with a uh, mini experiment, and after in uh, in 2010, um, I decide to use a particular barrel, a, a little bit small normal barrel, mm -hmm. a 200 liter, and have the wood a little bit thicker. Um, is an uh, um, experimentation in 2005-2010, and I decided to use uh, this this uh, this this uh, oak uh, uh, for all my production after 2010, and uh, um, um, with a, a bar, with a small barrel, we have more. Uh, uh, exposition with a uh, um, microcygenation, but with a wood a little bit thicker, we have a very slowly microcygenation. And we I have a co we have a comment here from a dear friend and a great sommelier from Puerto Rico, Sofia, saying, "Mr. Fuchi's dry peppers are the best. Got to try them a few years back. Anyone <laughs> makes dry peppers?" Yes, Peperone Crusco is the name in oh, Basilicata. Great. It's a typically, it's a typically uh, food in Basilicata. And uh, Sofia saying Titolo wine is one of my favorites. Well, she's a great sommelier. So wow. she, she knows about wow. wine. This, this wine is unbelievable. And I think, Pedro, please correct me if I'm mistaken, if I am here making a huge mistake. I think this wine is around $38, $39 here in Puerto Rico. Uh, for the for the quality of this wine, that price is super competitive. This is uh, Pedro or Lenoteca, if you guys are around. I think this wine is around $38, $39. Uh, uh, let me ask you, uh, Elena, do you enjoy wines from other parts of the world, not necessarily Italy, France, Spain, yes. New In World? Italy, what do you drink? I love the Nebbiolo grape, and I love the uh, Barolo and Barbaresco, and uh, uh, I love the, the bubbles, the sparkling wine. Trento, mm -hmm. Trento Doc. Uh, I, lo I, I love Trento Doc. <laughs> and uh, in outside uh, Italy, uh, I love the French. Because, the French uh, wines. Uh, yes, because uh, usually the Italian people and the French people are fighted. But uh, I think uh, uh, the French wine and the, the, the work in the wine, uh, the French people is uh, very good. Any region or any grape in particular? Bordeaux, Burgundy, Rome? Oh, I love the champagne. Oh, it's champagne. My, it's my dream. Yeah, my wife's it. my wife's favorite is champagne as well. Yeah, Cham ladies oh. tend to love champagne, <laughs> and she likes I, and she likes she likes the good ones. I mean, <laughs> yes, it's a difficult to share, but uh, I love uh, I love the champagne, the good champagne, and uh, and I love the Sauvignon Blanc grape. Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc grape, Blanc grape, I love. Yes, it's my what husband. what what, and this is uh, one of the, my last questions uh, in terms of the acceptance of these wines in the new world, the United States. Have you been, have you done visits to the United States to promote this wine? Yes, yes. What has yes. been, what, what, is, what is their acceptance, their feedback? I mean, when you go to New York or when you go to 
other yeah. parts, Chicago. What what is their feedback? What are their comments? I love, I love, I love the, the American people uh, because uh, they have uh, more respect for the producer, for the winemaker, and uh, um, um, they are very, uh, very, very happy when they see a young people work in this uh, in this. Um, in, in this business, and um, uh, they uh, they love the Italian life, uh, yeah, the family, the story, the, the food, the art, the yes, culture, the food, the, the culture, and uh, um, they are very, uh, very, uh, very, welcome. very nice and very welcome when we going in the, in the USA. Yes. Okay. Uh, because I have 29 different importer and I don't speak well English. That is. A f <laughs> that no, you're is doing fantastic. great. You're doing great, Elena. You're doing great. <laughs> um, let me ask you another thing. Um, in, in terms of your future, are you in the process of making any new wines or are you going to stay only making this title? Or, or are you in the plans of making a different wine or making something i guess uh more more concentrated with more barrel aging are you in the process of, or this is your yeah. only and will be forever your only wine uh, now i produce only titolo the uh, every sometimes i have a special edition um, but uh, i i think it's most important to respect the 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 crew I I think it's most important to to have the um, the, the vinification the separately vinification every every crew okay uh, and um, um, today my project is only titolo because I have only this grape and I make only my grape I don't sell it don't buy the grape is my philosophy beautiful in the, beautiful. In the future I don't know when. Uh, yeah, nobody knows where the future will take you. This is a brilliant wine. Yeah, yes. I'm going to try and buy 2013. Is the year my son was born, and I read that this wines last for 20, 25, 30 years. Uh, you started making Titolo, uh, what, 14 years ago, 15 years ago, 2000 and something. Oh, uh, maybe I think uh, it's possible uh, to aging uh, 20 years. Uh, how, how, were, how were your first wines drinking now? Are they beautiful, balanced, ready? They're still fresh? Oh, um, my first vintage is 2000. And the, today is the... Is the is, and the today, I opened in 2000 in the last November. And how was it holding up? Yes, and uh, he's, uh, he's uh, still young. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful, Elena. Thank you so much for your time. This is a brilliant, brilliant wine. It's lovely. And what I love about this wine is that it's changing in the glass. I mean, uh, I've been sampling this wine for 30 minutes now, and uh, it, it keeps changing. One of the things that I love about um, – uh, certain wines is the fact that they evolve. They open up like a rose. It opens. And mm -hmm. uh, this wine changes in the glass. This is a lovely wine yeah. in Puerto Rico. You can get it with La Enoteca de Ballester, Titolo, Ayanico del Vulture, from Basilicata, made by Elena Fucci, the lady that's with us uh, mm -hmm. on the screen. Elena, grazie. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very Eduardo. much. Thank this is a much. beautiful wine. I am sure I'm sure I'm going to buy some and sell her in my um, in my own little collection. And in the future, I'm going to give my son when he's of age, of course, to drink some of your wine. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Thank Elena. So much. Have a have a great night. A pleasure. I, bye. I, um, I waiting you in Basilicata. Take bye. care. Ciao. Viva Italia. Bye. Ciao. Bye bye.